last video, which was essentially a part one, I was working on the 17th century portion of the captain's quarters. I will link that video in the description box below, but basically I'm just trying to finish up this area before I move on to hyper-focusing on the spaceship part and finishing that up as well. I got a lot of ignored projects done in that video, but in this one I'm going to be creating a project that didn't before exist in my brain, I guess. I always thought I would be filling the captain's closet with clothing, but the captain has an entire changing room, so that doesn't make a lot of sense. I am going to be creating a cat closet. This is going to be a closet dedicated to the captain's cat, Centauri. I've gathered a few materials to hopefully make this a unique feature of the captain's quarters. In this video, I am also going to be tackling some lighting. You know, cats and lights, um, they, they go together. The lighting is something I really need to get right before this project potentially, maybe, goes off to the museum. This video might seem a little bit jumbled, but I'm going to edit the video so that you see all of the cat closet footage first, and then all of the lighting footage at the end of the video. So I'll go ahead and start this one the same way I did the last one. I'm gonna grab the 17th century portion, pull it over to my desk, and get to work. And just like last time, lighting and getting the camera into these small spaces is going to be a challenge. So I'm going to try to do my best. There is going to be a little bit of footage from my phone just because it's easier to reach in there and leave it to me to leave the darkest, hardest to reach part of the project until last. Great idea, Aira. Oh well, we're just gonna keep moving forward. So this is going to be a closet for Centauri, the captain's cat. I want Centauri to have access to all the parts of the ship without having to worry about opening a door. So I have these little tubes, these are like tubes I've had since I was a kid. Well, I haven't had these tubes, but I remember playing with these types of tubes when I was a kid. They make all sorts of fun sounds. I want to attach them to the back of the closet so that Centauri can leave and enter whenever he wants to. So in order to figure out where I need to cut the holes, I'm using an awl to punch a hole in the center of where the tube needs to go. So then when I turn the project around, I can see where I cut the holes, and I know that that's where I need to line up the tubes. I am going to be cutting off the smaller portion of the tube because I want it to be all one diameter. I'm using my circle template to figure out what the correct size needs to be, and then I can trace that circle onto the back of the project, and this is what's going to help guide me to where I need to cut. I am cutting through several layers of whatever I glued onto the back of this, so it does make it a little challenging. I made sure to have a fresh, sharp blade, which did make this a bit easier. I just took my time and made sure I was cutting all the way through as clean as I possibly could, which still wasn't that clean. Then I could test fit the tube to make sure everything worked out just like it was supposed to. And it did fit, and I think it looks really good, and I can kind of bend it into whatever pathway I want the tube to take. Now I can prep the surface by painting those areas that I cut through, and I'm also going to be painting the tubes. Because I don't want them to be bright red, it is okay if a little bit of red shines through. There is red throughout the cabin, but I don't want it to look like a toy. I want it to look more like some kind of tubing you would see on a spaceship. Once I have everything painted that's going to be close to the project, I decided to glue it in place. I'm using some Fabri-Tac glue and going around the edges. Now, painting plastic with acrylic paint doesn't always work. I did have some scratching, but I am going to be putting several layers of sealant on these tubes over time, just allowing it to dry as I go, so I'm hoping that will hold on. I'm also adding a layer of gallery glass, which is this fake glass leading that I'm hoping will help keep it in place too, and it makes it look more like a spaceship type weld or connection. Now I'm going to be adding some shelves into the cat closet. I'm going to be using some popsicle sticks in order to do this, but I had to add the tubing first because they're going to be towards the back of the closet. So let's make some shelves. The biggest problem with working on this closet is going to be getting the shelves to go straight across. It's a very awkward position to have my hands in. I can't see when my hand is in the way. So I've decided to add smaller supports on either side of the closet using a jumbo popsicle stick. 
then I can use a smaller stick on top of that to try and line that up as best as possible. This is going to be a support that goes on either side. And once the supports are in, I know you can only see one, but imagine that the exact same thing is on the other side. I can lay my shelf across the supports and know that I will have a straight shelf. And this is because I was able to cut the jumbo popsicle stick supports to the same size. Once I'm happy with it, I painted the sticks and I'm going to cover everything with something that I think looks like a fabric that a cat could grab onto. Oh, and I also had the issue of my phone, which I'm using to film, falling over and over again as I was trying to film inside this space. I continued the process of adding sticks, supports, and I also wanted to add this little tube because I thought it would be cool to have a little hidey hole for the cat. And I glued that just underneath the popsicle stick shelf and just to see how it looked. And then I ripped it off and covered everything with that same fabric. It was very key to paint and cover everything before I glued it into the closet. Otherwise it would be impossible to get to anything. I added one final shelf towards this other tube at the top of the closet. That way Centauri could get to the bottom and the top tube, whichever tube he felt like going through. Before I glued the shelves in permanently, I had to age the closet because again, I won't be able to reach anything after that. And I decided to make a few accessories for the closet as well. I imagine the captain is going to have to pick up cat food as she goes along at different ports or different stops in her journey. So I wanted to make some generic looking bags of what could be cat food or other cat needed supplies. So I found a paper bag template online, just a generic paper bag template, printed it out small and cut and glued it together. Then I was going to add what would look like the food. I added a little drop of glue in the bottom and then added some of this coarse ballast or just small rocks on the inside. It doesn't matter what color they are because the bag is going to be closed up, but this is going to give the bag some weight and make it easier to look like an actual bag of what could be cat food. Then I accordion folded the sides, used some tweezers to roll down the top of the bag, and then I can finally at the end, once I'm happy with how it's looking, I can add a little bit of glue so that it's glued shut tightly and I know that no rocks are going to be leaking out over the years. Now I have what looks like a little food container that the captain might have got at a market in some galaxy across space and is storing up for Centauri. I also had a couple people suggest a cardboard box because we all know cats love cardboard boxes. No matter how far in the future it may be, uh, cardboard boxes are probably going to be around even if they're antique items by that time. I had this one in my collection. It was a little bit too tall and bulky for where I wanted it to go in the closet. So I decided to cut down the sides and just kind of bend them out as if a cat has over time kind of smushed the sides of the box down which I think is, you know, kind of fun, fun imagining him all curled up in there. Um, Centauri is actually made of plastic, so I cannot put him in any other position, but it's fun to imagine. Once both the bags of food and the box were complete, I took some chalk pastel and a soft brush and just kind of gave them a little bit of age. There's no labels on the bags, but I do want them to look as though, you know, they've been moved around maybe in a shopping bag. And of course the box has been there for a little bit, so it definitely needed some age. And of course you can't have a living breathing creature on a spaceship without having food and water. So I had a couple of these bowls from past projects. I kind of like that they don't match and I'm going to be adding some food and water into these. I'm using some glue, paint, and a few more of those rocks to make up Centauri's food. I'm just mixing those together and then when I'm ready to put it into the bowl, I'm just going to add a little bit of glue in the bottom and then pick up the mixture with my toothpick. I'm trying to be very careful that I don't get any of this on the side of the bowl because I don't want any paint to mark the side of the bowl. I want it to look like it's all the food that's in the bottom. I'm just going to let that dry overnight and then we should have some cat food in a bowl. I'm also going to use this diamond glaze to create the water in the bottom of this gray bowl. This is something I would normally use UV resin for. I don't have UV resin and I've really enjoyed using this diamond glaze for different things. So I added that in the bottom to see how it would work and I will show you that a little bit later how it comes out once it dries. 
Here's a look at all the items in the cat closet. I think they're looking pretty good. I could only fit in two bags of food, but I did notice that um, it's just not looking very comfortable. I think we're missing some cushions. Thankfully, the cushions for this project have been taken care of for me. And that's a segue to a package that was recently delivered for both the captain and Centauri. Let's take a look. This beautiful crate is specifically for the captain. Like I can't, it just, just the detail on the outside of it is so cool. And then uh, you can see Centauri over here waiting for his crate, which is a little bit bigger, still so cool. I can't wait to show you what's in these. Um, but Centauri, you might wanna move over a little bit um, because Centauri actually has another crate that is uh, still one of these bigger crates. And also this piece, <laughs> and, um, it did not fit in a crate, but oh my gosh, it looks so cool. It's gonna look amazing in the spaceship portion of this project. And uh, yeah, so Centauri was just gifted with quite a bit and you will understand why this looks a little off balance when you find out who actually sent these items. These items came along with a letter from Amira and I will put a photo of Amira on screen as I read this letter, which may also help you understand. To Captain Magdalena Estrella, it is rare of me to offer assistance to others and even rarer to reach out to someone of human or humanoid persuasion. But my research has shown Centauri is right and your mission is vital, not only for your timeline, but mine as well. If my understanding is correct, your ship is rather old and you are relying on robots to keep it running. The one I am sending is my own invention and new miniaturized design and has proven invaluable in identifying any weak points in power flow or structure. I hope it serves you well. The rest of the shipment, including the crates everything comes in, is for Centauri. Please give the small gifts to him with my regards. Amira. We will open the captain's crate a little bit later in the video. Uh, also, I have some other really cool things that we can look at that were sent in. But first, let's go ahead and open up Centauri's crates so we can get those really comfy cushions into the closet. These were handmade by Veronica, who is also the creator behind Amira, and they're just so fun. There were so many cushions in here. I honestly don't know how she fit them all into the crate. She also sent several things that could be used as cat toys, so I'm going to put a few of those in the closet as well. I wanted to add some kind of fabric drape, just like over the captain's bed. I couldn't find the original fabric, so I used this fabric, and I also kind of made it look as though Centauri had messed up some of the fabric over the years. So here's how it's looking so far. I am really loving it. I do add a couple more things at the end of the video, but at the moment, I do think it's, it's blending in. I think it looks like it could possibly have been part of this ship for a very long time. And of course, Centauri is the only living, breathing companion of the captain, so it makes sense that he might be a little bit spoiled. I know I promised you lights in this video and I do add some lights in, but we had a bit of a fiasco. I had planned to try and wire, well, Mr. Technology, not me. My plan was to wire some fairy lights that I previously installed into these strip LED lights, which I used on the Adams Family House. It did not work at all. And in fact, it busted all the bulbs in the fairy lights. <laughs> It looked like it was going to work. It looked beautiful. It was gorgeous. I loved it. And then I started hearing pop, 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 pop. And um, then there was a burning smell and I unplugged it as fast as I could. <laughs> I will tell you more about that in a future video because now I'm going to actually have to cut into part of the captain's quarters that was finished and reinstall those lights using a different type of light. But it's all good because I'm glad that happened now and I'm glad it happened quickly so that there wasn't any chance of a fire or something happening like that. Fire is no good. So I'll show you what I got done on the spaceship part of the captain's quarters using this type of lighting. I am going to try my best to keep the camera as steady as possible. But here is the captain's quarters spaceship part with just everything taken out of it. And so I'll give you a tour of the lights that I've put in and then I will put everything in and turn them on. 
So you will remember, hopefully, the infinity mirror. Well, I had originally put some lights in there. So that's kind of the end of our lighting strip. And so the lights start here. They go through the wall so you can see the lights coming out here. And they go underneath this piece of mat board that is sitting on this platform. This is where the 17th century portion sits. And it's elevated off of the spaceship platform and I wanted it to look like it had glowing lights underneath. These are just glued up underneath here so that they uh, shine down onto the surface. So these go all the way around here and then they go back here. So ignore this part right now. They go back here and then you can kind of see some electrical tape. There's black electrical tape here that does cover up the wire going here. So then the wire goes around this platform. This is where the dressing room sits. It goes around and then it wraps all the way around because these lights also need to plug in and light up the dressing room. So I'll show you where this plugs in. So then that will connect to the dressing room, which is currently missing. Go across the dressing room and then the dressing room connects to this piece right here. And then this piece goes up here and is the lights that light up the plant room. So then the lights go across here and then eventually out the back wall to plug into a plug. So the plug is actually back here behind this wall. So that's the entire route of this one string of lights. So I also had to adapt this room because it wasn't quite sitting flush to the wall and I didn't want there to be gaps of light. So this is black cardstock that I sandwich some magnets in. So there's little magnets when I press on here. It's hard to see because it's black paper. And then inside the foam wall, I put pin nails, similar to my wall, um, magnet wall technique. So whenever I go to put my room in place, you can kind of hear it snap. It snaps in place and it holds secure so that while it's duration at the museum, it won't get loose or fall backwards or anything like that. So it is stuck in place. All right, so I got everything back in place and I was gonna show you that connection I talked about earlier. So you can see how it connects right there. And then over here it connects. So this was the missing connection that we had. And these are just 3D printed pieces that are going to be holding the lights. And if you watched my Adams Family lighting video, I basically made these same things but by hand with some wood and these are just going to sit on the edge just the edge of the floor and then this is the place where those sticky lights can stick onto and then light up the entire room and now I will turn it on so that you can see how everything looks and that was just with the touch of a switch which is really nice for the museum because they don't have to open the case and turn anything on so here is that infinity hallway I was talking about and then it runs underneath the 17th century portion and kind of lights up the floor. It lights up underneath of the dressing room because that was the first pass around. And then the second pass around is the lights for the dressing room. And I think it turned out pretty nice. So I kind of like how the light looks in there. And then when we go around the corner, you can see the light for the plant room. See how that looks. And then, as I told you, it comes out the back, and then there is the connection to connect to the plug. Now that you've seen that, I'm going to be using a very similar method I used on the changing room on the 17th century portion of the ship, and adding lights again like this so that I can light up the interior of the 17th century part. Thankfully, I had two strips of lights left over from the Adams Family Project, which were warm lights, which I think is going to make a really great contrast between the cool lights in the spaceship portion and the warm lights inside of the wooden captain's quarters. Before I add any lighting to this area, I needed to finish off the edges with just some paper that I painted silver. They had just been plain foam board for quite a while. To attach the lights, I 3D printed these pieces that I designed in Tinkercad. This area is the perfect width to fit over the foam board ledge. And then I will add the sticky lights to the top and the bottom. 
By doing this, you will have light that's shining up from the floor on the upper level and light that's shining down from the ceiling on the lower level. The lights will need room to get around some of the edges, so I used flush cutters to cut off any excess pieces or areas that I thought would be blocked off. Once I'm happy with the placement, I'm going to be gluing them on with some tacky glue, making sure that they're evenly spaced as possible. I didn't want to do one long piece because I do have a little bit of a bend in my floor and I was afraid that it wouldn't fit even if I did print it in one piece. For the lower floor, I decided to make something that looked similar, but it's not going to have lighting attached, so it just needed to be more of a decorative piece. Once they're dry, I can go ahead and paint them with silver, and I'm also going to age them so that they look very similar to the metal pieces that I've already put on the edges of this project. I'm not going to be painting the area where the lights are attached because I don't want the stickiness to be sticking to paint. I want it to stick directly to the plastic. These are the strip LED lights that I told you about. I have two left over from the Adams Family project that are just the amount that I need to light up these spaces with warm colored LEDs. First, I need to test fit it to make sure everything is going to fit. And because the pieces are separate, you can see that the sticky bits are going to show through. In order to cover this up, I'm using some black cardstock, and these are just going to make some little bridges in between the pieces that will be the back of the lighting strip, or it'll be a place for the lighting strip to stick onto. Once all the black cardstock is in place, I can remove the paper backing from the lights and carefully slip them into place. I'm trying to make sure that I don't get any LEDs directly behind the poles that are holding up the upper floor. There is a little bit of give when it comes to trying to stick these down. You can unstick them, uh, so I don't feel like it was too difficult to kind of move them around and get them in place. Then I could attach both LED strips together, and this is how they are looking. Eventually I will cover it with electrical tape. And I attached it temporarily to another string of lights, and for the first time, you and I can both see these areas lit up. And honestly, I just kind of sat there and stared at it for a while. This was the first time I had seen everything lit up inside of here without there being a huge work light in the way. I will give you a more close-up view with my phone camera because it can just get into this area a little bit easier. And the lights look pretty good, I think, against the globes that I glued uh, in the last video up to the ceiling. I still don't think it looks like the globes are glowing, but I do think it looks pretty good. I'm pretty excited about it. I do think it gives off the same vibe as if there were some warm candles glowing in this area. I had to add this into the spaceship portion, and I really love the contrast between the light colors. I also took this opportunity to figure out more having to do with the cat tunnels. They were just kind of left behind earlier in the video. Adding in the cat tree to the side, I think this is where I want it to go. So connecting a tunnel from the back of the closet out into this area makes a lot of sense for me. So let's finish those up real quick so that those can be complete. I'm just going to be cutting off the ends. I didn't quite know where I wanted them to go, so I didn't cut off the ends at any length, but now I can remove them and try to position them into place. I'm going to have one that goes straight onto the top of the captain's quarters and then one that goes off to the side that goes near to the cat tree. This one in the back is going to have to be supported. I don't want it to be flopping all over the place. So I'm using some black cardstock and I'm going to glue that around this portion that I did not paint. This piece of cardstock is going to be a lot easier to glue to the back of the captain's quarters. I'd be nervous that if I glued it straight to the pipe that eventually the paint would let go of the plastic and it would all kind of come off. So it looks kind of cool. I think it adds to structural support, making it look like something that was actually glued on. I also added a strip of paper over the top of it to help with the look of it and also supporting it. I'm going to do the same for the very top pipe. I'm adding just a strip of cardstock over the top of it so that it can stay in place and not flop around if I'm ever moving this project somewhere. So I'm just going to put a one, two, three block on top to keep the paper in place while it dries. 
And of course, like everything else, I'm going to paint it with some metallic paint to make it look like metal. This part of the project turned out better than I was imagining, and I really think it'd be fun to see if people who view the project try to see where the tunnels are going. I added some more rivets. These are just diamond painting drills and glued those on, and I'm going to paint them and age everything. Now that the lighting's done, I really want to try and put all of the interior items into this space. It's been a long time since the books have been on the shelf, since the ships have been on the shelf, and I really just want to see what I have. My goal is to be able to use everything that was sent in for the captain's quarters. I think there'll be room for everything. Speaking of everything, I decided to lay it all out on a table just to see what there was. I have been saving up books, which of course many of you have sent in over the years, and other items such as the Fiji mermaid, a ship model, a crocheted blanket, and just so many other items that have specifically been sent in for this project. I wanted to see every single thing laid out so I knew what I had. To be honest, it was a little overwhelming to just see your generosity laid out like that. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. I also have a lot of little details. I have some maps and paintings that were sent in. And then of course I have the furniture, furniture that is going to fill up this space. Many of the pieces I already had, some were made for me or I made. And yeah, I think it's all just going to come together. Let's take a closer look at some of the items that were sent in for this video in the captain's quarters. I've already shown you part of what Veronica sent in, but she also sent these really cool tubes. She sent me some spider serum, which I've always wanted to try out, so I will be doing that in the future. Of course, the beads I used and the containers. I wanted to show you a closer look at these. They are really cool. The lids fit on really tight and they will be going somewhere into the project. I just, I love their design. And then you saw the cat tree tower. Now we will look into the item that was sent for the captain. This is the tiny little robot that was designed by Veronica. It's a smaller version of the robots that's in her project uh, with Amira that sent the letter I read earlier. So it's really delicate. I'm going to leave it in here until I have a good spot for it. She also made me these earrings that are the Adams Family book, one of the first items that was ever sent to me when I was first doing my blog. I reviewed this book, so I'm super excited to wear these earrings. I'm going to put the spaceship items back into this bin where all the robots are hanging out and I'm going to put those off to the side for when I'm focused more on the spaceship portion. The next items were sent in and handmade by Kim. She made an oil lamp and a little inkwell with a feather pin. She also made these rolled star charts and also an individual star chart that could go pretty much anywhere in the project. And this little booklet that has a pencil sticking out. I think this one will probably go on the captain's desk. And finally, she made this digital star map that may have to go somewhere in the spaceship section. Thank you so much, Kim, for these items. Thank you, Veronica. I'm so excited to put them all to good use. I didn't quite know how to begin the process of putting everything into the captain's quarters, but I knew I wanted to start with the books because they were going to be the most overwhelming. So I'm going to start with groups of five books at a time. I do not want to glue them into the bookshelf because many of them open, have really cool secrets on the inside, so I've decided to come up with a system that allows me to stick them in place but still remove them in the future. I'm cutting a length of black cardstock to about the width of the stack of books I'm working on, and I'm going to use Zig two-way glue in order to stick them down. If you use the glue and glue something to it while, it's, while the glue is still wet, it will permanently stick. But if you let the glue dry completely, then you will have a sticky, kind of like a post-it type stickiness that you can stick something down to, but it's still removable if you don't want it stuck down permanently. So this is going to be my little solution for getting the books onto the shelf, hopefully keeping them in place and not having to, you know, just keep fixing them over the years if they fall off. 
After they're stuck down, I'm carefully trimming the edges so I don't have any awkwardness with edges bumping each other. I'm just going to trim around the books and then I have this little section of books that can be slid onto the shelf. Once it's on the shelf, I'm going to be using some museum wax underneath it. I didn't want museum wax directly on the books because I was afraid it would gum up the really delicate pages of the ones that open. So here's the result of quite a bit of work of sticking them down five at a time. Now they're all ready to go up on the shelf. I did keep a few out that are going to be kind of tucked away as if the captain had grabbed a book off the shelf and then dropped it down somewhere else, being a little bit too lazy to go back to the bookshelf. So now I can slide them on. Uh, probably about two of these groups slid on easily and the rest of the groups, some of them just out of the group were a little bit too tall to slide them on. But I did start to get a system down and within about three hours I had the bookshelves filled. It did take me three hours but I was trying to get everything done correctly and taking my time was the best way to do that. I stuffed the back of the shelves with some creepy cloth. This is so I had something I could push the books up against and none of them would fall in the back and get lost. I'm also adding little bookends and things and um, knickknacks that I feel like would have ended up on the shelf. And here's the final look at how everything is sitting. I'm really, really happy with the layout. Everything's pretty secure. I don't have a fear of anything falling out. Of course, if I do transport the captain's quarters somewhere, I will be like stuffing the inside of the room really carefully around the books. So yeah, but I'm really happy. And also along with one of the sets of books, I had forgotten I had these little mice. And so I thought they'd be really cute toys for Centauri. So I'm going to add the mice around. And this is also going to block the fact that I never finished the trim around the base <laughs> of the closet. So that's kind of a two birds, one stone situation. Now I can focus on the ships. They have been off of these shelves for quite a while. These display shelves are the ones that I previously mentioned the lights went out. There's fairy lights that light up each individual section. They are going to have to be fixed, hopefully from the back. So I feel safe adding these ships in and hopefully um, I won't have to tear anything up too much in order to fix the lights. I'm going to be putting these in place with museum wax. I do hope that they will just be able to ride along inside their little cubbies and stay safe whenever I do move the project. I'm adding the Fiji mermaid to this little spot at the bottom and I also kept out the Fiji mermaid book which I can display right next to him. Now that most of the little bitty pieces are on the shelves, I can start adding in the furniture and getting a feel for the space. I also started burning out at this point on making decisions and I had a hard time figuring out what's going to go on the desk, what's going to go on the very top shelves of the bookcase. So I added in what I was sure of and the rest of it I just kind of held in place and I will be sitting back and doing a long staring session at some point figuring out the rest of it. But for now, here's a closer look at what I was able to get into place for this video. also very happy with the success of the cat tunnels. You can see one over here peeking out underneath the cat tree. Let's go ahead and deliver this final package to the captain. We saw what was in it earlier, but we didn't put it into the project. So we'll do that now. I don't know if this is the final place, but it does look pretty good on the captain's desk. I think Centauri's happy with his cat closet and the captain's happy to have her books back and a little bit of light. So that's all I have for y'all today. I hope you enjoyed it. We got quite a bit done, 
but I'm still not completely finished with the 17th century portion of the captain's quarters. I need to fix those lights that went out and there's a few more items that I wanna find places for. I just really ran out of creative energy towards the end of this one and I don't wanna rush things or make decisions that I'll regret later. I hope you all enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Is this awkward? Feels a little awkward. <laughs> Cause I really don't know how the rest of the video is going to go. <laughs> where is Stormy? Where is Stormy? I don't know. I don't know. Can it go back together? Next time you can be in charge, okay? Third grade Aero was awesome with this toy. The boss is here.